Senator Blunt joining us now on KSPR 33 News at 4. Thanks for being here. Hey, good to be with we you, Jerry. We appreciate you stopping by and talking to us all. I want to tell people if they have questions for you, it's never been easier to do that. Uh, Blunt.senate.gov or the local offices, um, right. by all means, they right. can reach out to you anytime they want. And we try to communicate with people however they want to communicate with us. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the Facebook page, uh, email. We, we get fewer and fewer letters all the time, I think, because we're more responsive to every other kind of communication all the time. And uh, letters are fine if that's how you want to communicate, but if you want to communicate in some other way, that's how we want to talk to you. It's really never been easier to reach out right. to your elected representatives. Let's talk uh, about a lot of legislation regarding energy right now, and the president if you don't know, was out in California today, uh, gave an entire address just on American energy. And a couple of points from that speech that I thought were very interesting. Number one, he pointed out that domestic oil production is out, is more right now than the oil we are importing for the first time in 20 years. I found that a very uh, telling, if not uh, interesting, um, point he made. But also, he never mentioned the word coal in the entire speech, and it was on American energy, and a lot of American energy. The bulk right. of it is coal, right. and he never right. mentioned it the entire time. Your take on, on both of those points or anything else in that speech today? Well, you, you know, I think, interestingly, the president likes to talk about how we're producing more energy than we have uh, in, in years, and certainly than we were when he became president, uh, But what he and takes some credit for that. Uh, but we're not doing that because of any government policy. We're actually doing that in spite of all the policies that make it difficult uh, to uh, do the things that actually were being allowed when he became president on exploring on some public lands, things that could happen uh, in areas where the government really controls uh, oil. But uh, in oil and gas, it's a great opportunity for us, but continuing to use coal uh, is great for us, too. We, we have more of the fossil fuels uh, than we ever really thought possible. We knew we were the Saudi Arabia of coal. may turn out that we're also the, with fracking, uh, with the uh, shale oil and shale gas, that we're also pretty much the Saudi Arabia of all these fuels. And certainly, between us and and our neighbors uh, in Canada and Mexico, we could, if we wanted to, be energy self-sufficient. Uh, I bet the president didn't mention the Keystone Pipeline nope. either, but it's pretty hard to have a discussion anywhere else in America where you talk about the kinds of things we ought to be doing where the, the Keystone Pipeline isn't seen as one of the litmus tests. One of the real concerns, though, is about the emissions, the amount of carbon we're putting into the atmosphere and the effect that will have on our climate over the next decades and centuries. Uh, you have a carbon tax amendment into current tax uh, current uh, legislation. Explain what that is. Well, you know, we were having supposedly going to have an energy debate on right. um, energy conservation, which mm -hmm. I'm for. Uh, not much about new energy in this energy debate, but we said, look, we haven't had an energy debate, or the Senate hasn't right. had an energy debate in seven years. Let's talk about energy. Let's talk about the Keystone Pipeline. Let's talk about what we want to do with uh, uh, natural gas. Uh, let's talk about uh, carbon and, and what, how it impacts us. You know, looking at our current policies, which really do pr produce a pretty low carbon footprint, you could basically put us out of the energy business and not have much impact on what happens to world carbon. What, what bad policies do, Jerry, is drive jobs somewhere else that cares a whole lot less about what comes out of the smokestack than we do. And so it's a lose-lose instead of the win-win could have now with American energy. And I just think the president, and particularly the regulators that the president have put in place, are almost always reaching too far to make the right kind of economic decisions for good take-home pay. Uh, America's ready to make things again, mm -hmm. to manufacture things again. But probably the key component in that decision right now is what does the utility bill look like? Mm -hmm. And if you've got a predictable utility bill and, and a delivery system you can, deli you, can, you can rely on, I think we're ready to see a return to manufacturing in the country, but a lot of that's going to be dependent on common sense energy policies instead of extreme energy policies. Real briefly, City Utilities pointed out this week that they are, they are, they are putting 90% less pollution out into the air because mm -hmm. of their, their, they have you know, adjusted in, in really uh, forecasting the regulations that would be coming down so the current regulations really aren't affecting them. We haven't seen a 90% increase in our utility bill, so I thought that was a nice uh, demonstration that Regulation can work without, you know, driving us all to the courthouse paying our, our well, utility. Well, and, and I think that's that's not outside the picture for American energy and American utilities generally. Now the question is, what happens if you try to close that last 10 percent? Right. What happens to the jobs? Who are the people that are having the hardest time 
paying their utility bill right now. The most vulnerable families are the ones that are most impacted by extreme energy policies uh, that don't have a cost-benefit analysis. That last, those, that last 10 percent you add on right. may be the 10 percent that means poor families can't pay their utility bill, and more importantly, working families don't have a place to work. We hope you do have a debate on this. We want to move on to your ongoing efforts to address mental health issues, particularly mm -hmm. the, the uh, Caring for Americans Hero Bill. Tell our viewers what that involves. You know, this is, uh, as, as we look at what's happening in the country, one of the things we have refused to deal with the way that we ought to, uh, as all other health concerns, is mental health. Yeah. Every time there's a, a violence tragedy, you see that. Now, people who have a mental health problem are more likely to be the victim right. of a of a, of a crime than but it's the a common denominator but it, in those but, it, but the perpetrators that's no mm -hmm. matter what else varies that does not vary and usually it's something that people close to them and even uh, law enforcement or others in the community knew about but somehow we just haven't been willing to deal right. with this and particularly for uh, the military uh, our, our, our military men and women yeah. probably have about the same percentage of mental health challenges that all adults do the 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 National Institute of Health says one out of four adult Americans has a mental health, a uh, diagnosable mental health problem that can almost always be dealt with, and we just have refused to deal with those like other health problems. In the military, for instance, a bill that I introduced just uh, in the last couple of weeks uh, it would treat uh, retirees, spouses, and dependents on mental health like we treat retirees, spouses, and dependents on all other health. You can. Uh, your hospital stay is limited on mental health where it's not on other problems. We're making great sti strides with the military itself. Right. We need to be sure that those that share that burden, the retirees and the family members, also get to benefit from those great strides. We have limited time. We have to leave it there. A lot of progress in that area being made. If you want to look up, uh, it's Caring for Our Americans Heroes uh, bill that is uh, right. being pushed through right now. Appreciate your work on that and everything else on behalf of Missouri as well as Senator thank McCaskill you. there in Washington. Keep up the great work and keep doing what you're doing. Senator Roy Blunt, thank you so much. Safe travels.